Hey, what's up everyone, Ollie here. So in this video, we're gonna be unboxing the iPhone 13 mini. I also have the iPhone 13 Pro here, just to show you for comparison, the box difference, the size difference, and obviously the box design as well. Obviously this year again, there are no chargers in the boxes. So we do have the, the thin boys, the thin boxes that we have here. An interesting thing with these boxes is that there's no plastic cling film or shrink wrapping anything like that on them. It looks like Apple are going sort of all in on the sort of recycling, recycle packaging, whatever. Um, so yeah, no plastic wrapping whatsoever. Now they have, so if I get this phone out of the way, I'm not really sure how it works exactly, but I assume well, it looks like the pull tab is connected to the actual box here. And then you have the tab that's connected to the back of the sort of box as well. Um, but yeah, let's get into unboxing this one. Actually, I should quickly say, this is the midnight model. It's 128 gig. Now they're starting at 128 gig, which is nice to see. But yeah, let's get into unboxing it. Got to pull two tabs actually. It looks like there's not even any plastic wrapping on the back. You can see, you can just see the reflection of the camera. Um, but yeah, this definitely has a bluey tinge to it. This midnight color. It doesn't look black. Definitely has like a very much of a blue tinge to it. So if we get the phone out, again, just paper on the front. They did do this on the last year's iPhones as well, but it's interesting to see they've also kept it for this year. In the box we have SIM, SIM card pin, Apple sticker, only the one. We also have USB to lightning as expected. It's a shame that we didn't switch over to USB-C this year entirely. But yeah, if we put the box away, put that aside, get the phone itself. That is satisfying. It feels so small. It's it's just hilariously small because phones just keep getting bigger and bigger. But as you can see, that, that midnight color, it's definitely got a bluey tinge to it. I'm not sure I'm the biggest fan of it, to be honest. I think I would have much preferred a, a, a proper black, really. Same with the sides. We have the aluminum sides. They all also have like a bluey tinge to them, but I really like the aluminum sides on this. I actually think they're a little bit nicer, the stainless steel. Stainless steel feels more expensive and stainless steel is more hard wearing, but the stainless steel gets a lot of fingerprints. The, the iPhone 13, iPhone 13 mini had the aluminum, which does a much better job hiding the fingerprints. But the back is glossy, glass. So there's fingerprints easily get on, well, fingerprints get on it very easily. We also have the new camera module up top. So the cameras on the old ones used to be here, used to have one camera here, one camera here, but because the cameras are better this year, bigger and better, they're now in a diagonal format so they could have actually fit them in this part of the phone. The notch as well is smaller. I'll actually turn it on so that we can see it with the screen on. If there's battery, yeah, there is battery. But yeah, it just feels so small. It looks and feels so small in the hand, it's hilarious. <laughs> the nice hello graphic that we get. The notch is supposed to be smaller this year. 20% smaller, Apple is saying. The display hasn't really changed from last year, from last year's mini model. It is still a 5.4 inch Super Retina XDR display, they like to call it. Um, basically OLED display. And you know, iPhone screens in general are pretty darn good. So I'm sure most people won't have any issues with the display on this phone. The peak brightness has changed as well though. The peak brightness has gone from 625 nits to now 800 nits, which should be so much better when using it outside. Now that does also mean it should consume more battery life, but Apple are saying that this model has, is it one and a half hours more? Two hours. On the iPad, on the iPhones? On the iPhone mini, yeah. On the iPhone 13 mini, two hours more battery life. 
that's pretty that's pretty good actually i'm actually pretty impressed by that another thing with the screen is that it is just the standard 60 hertz now for the 13 and 13 mini yeah i'm, I'm don't think that's too much of an issue the pro models do have the new promotion 120 hertz displays but i feel like 120 hertz is more of a sort of pro feature so it makes sense that it's in the pro models this year all the iphones also have the new a15 bionic chip which uh, which has a six core cpu and a four core gpu on the 13 and 13 mini the pro versions actually have the five core gpu um so again i feel like it's not really going to be too much of an issue for most people using a phone like this apple's a series of chips are just so good that by the sounds of it, there isn't actually too much different from last year's A14. Um, I can only assume that this year's A15 has just been optimized a little bit for better battery life and for a little bit better performance. Anyway, it's good to see that it has the A15 Bionic chip. It means it should last for years to come. You shouldn't have any performance issues whatsoever. As I mentioned, this comes with 128 gigabytes of storage up from last year's. Last year's was 64 gigabytes. So it's good to see that all the new iPhones now come with 128 gigabytes as standard. Everything else though, other than the cameras, is pretty much exactly the same. We still have 5G, we still have Wi-Fi 6, we still have IP68 certification, and of course you have MagSafe as well. The cameras though are really where the biggest changes are. So if we run through some of the numbers, so we still have 12 megapixel cameras, One's a standard one and one's an ultra wide. All of the lenses now have sensor shift capability. So last year, only the 12 Pro Max had sensor shift capability, which basically means better image stabilization. Now all of the iPhones have it. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I have to go with the high-end model to have all these fancy features. You still now get them even in the 13 mini. Another big feature this year is cinematic mode. It'll be interesting to see what that's like. I haven't tried it out myself. And from looking at the keynote and stuff, I mean, yeah, it looks pretty clever. But as I mentioned in sort of my initial thoughts of cinematic mode, I wasn't a big fan of the sort of focus blurring, the artificial focus blurring and the focus stacking as well. It just seemed a bit off, but it'd be interesting to see what it's like when I actually use it, see how easy it is to use, see how easy it is to get some cinematic footage, as they say. Another very small thing is that all of the iPhones are ever so slightly thicker. I can only assume that's for a better battery. This iPhone 13 mini also comes in Midnight, the one I've got here, Starlight, blue, pink, and red. So I'm actually a big fan of the 13 mini. I kind of wish they did a 13 mini pro. That's the only reason why I feel like I'm not using a 13 mini because I really like the size of this. I actually prefer the smaller size of this phone. Um, so yeah, the only reason why I'm going for the pro is because it has the pro motion and it has the better cameras and stuff. So yeah, that is the 13 mini. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.